All right, so um, for the next part, we're going to go through an example. And um, for this, I want you to, we're going to need this data file. So um, <coughs> you probably downloaded it for your homework. Um, but if not, or if you want to get a fresh copy, um, what we're going to do is go to the GitHub page, go to uh, data, and this is the file, uh, the last file here, World Series winners. Uh, click on that raw link, and uh, we're going to copy that, go to, I'm going to open up a new uh, terminal window with my command T. Again, I'm going to navigate to SIO 209 slash lessons. I'm going to do curl dash capital O. Download that. Uh, sorry, cancel that. Hit control C. If you did it already, it's fine. But I don't want to be in lessons. I want to be in data. Um, I, I, what, what I've done is I have this GitHub repository, right? And the GitHub repository has relative paths. So the relative path says, um, you know, it knows there's a lessons folder, and it says it also knows there's a data folder, which is one level above. Um, and so it's going to look in there. So if we if we mirror that relative path structure on our in our SIO 209 folder, then we will then the notebook will work just right. So we're going to be in our data folder, and then we're going to do curl-o to download that file. And we can, we can do tail World Series winners and see that, uh, indeed, the Boston Red Sox won the World Series this year, and that's been added to the file. Okay, so we're going to go through this example. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the default number of um, rows that are displayed. So by default, it uh, shows 30 pandas, uh, or the notebook will show 30 of the first rows of a data frame and 30 of the last rows. We're going to change this to 10. So we're going to use this pd.setOption display.maxRows10. Uh, now we're going to do a read CSV. So we're going to pass that file path. And so now that that file is in the right place on our computer. Uh, it has no header. And we're going to give that, that um, column a name. We're calling it a data frame even though it only has one column. So it's technically a, a series. Um, and so we're, we're going to have this this column here, um, and we're going to add a new. Um, we're going to create a second uh, data frame or or series that's going to be called DF new, and that's going to just have a single team. So we're going to concatenate the current data frame. In fact, let's just see. I'm curious here. So it is actually a data frame because of the way we created it, even though it only has one column. Um, so what we're going to do is concatenate those uh, and ignore the index so that um, even, though this, um, even though this data frame has index 0 and this one has up to 115, it will reset the index when we concatenate those. So now we can see we've added the San Diego Padres uh, to our list of World Series winners. Um, I did this last year, and it didn't turn out to be true, but you never know. It could happen, right? Um, so we'll see. We'll come back next year, and we'll see if the Padres won the World Series. We can also add a column. So I'm going to add a column called year and add a column called first initial. So this is a, this is not a concat kind of thing. This is a, a just a pandas kind of thing. We're adding a column. 
in this case we're adding two columns. So the way that we add a column is we say this, this is df2 here. So we're going to say df2 and then in brackets the name of the column and then to the right of the equal sign we're going to put what, we, what data we want to be in that column. In this case we're going to put a, a numpy uh, a range or a range of data in it as a numpy array and it's going to start at 1903 which is the, the first the first World Series was in 1903 and it was won by the Boston Americans and then we're going to go all the way up to uh, the end of that array and the way we can do this is we can say I want to go from 1903 to uh, plus some some value which is equal to the the uh, the length of that the length of that data frame or the the shape of that data frame so that's 117 um, but I want the ability to to sort of um, not have to know that that number is 117. So if I did df shape 0, um, let's just see, df2.shape is this, um, this is a tuple. So if I do, do it, df shape 0, that's 117. So I can put that in my formula here, and then I don't have to know how big that, that data frame is. I can just calculate it on the fly. So that's going to be one column. And then we're going to have another column that we're going to form using a list comprehension. So this is going to be the first initial of the team and that's going to be made using a list comprehension. So it's going to be letter zero, the first letter of team, um, where team is all of the elements of column team. So we're saying for each team in this column, get me the first letter and that's going to be stored as a new column. So this is a really powerful way to add information to your data frame. Uh, where did it go? Oh, I didn't. I didn't execute this. Sorry. Um, so we've now we've got our team column here. We've now added the year and the first initial. So that's really. Um, really cool. This is, this is why list comprehensions are so so great, and there's so much you can do uh, with this kind of thing. This is the this is the idea that you, you can take an existing column and get the information you want out of that to create a new a new column. You could do a, a regular expression to like substitute some text. You can do some some operations. Here we pulled the first letter. Anything you can imagine. Um, we could get the square root of the year. You know, we could do that. We could do square root of, of year here, etc. Uh, okay, next we're going to cover uh, stack and unstack, which are ways to kind of reshape data frames. So we take this data frame here and we, uh, we run stack on it. What it's going to do is um, turn this into, let's do type stack df. It's going to turn this data frame into a series that has um, a, a hierarchical index. So there might be the reasons why this would be useful, but it's going to take the, uh, the, the columns will be this second index, the, the indexes will be the first index, and then the values will be uh, the, the values in the data frame. And those all get converted to objects because they have to be in a single column. This is a way you can, depending on, often this is useful if you want to plot your data and you need, you need to kind of get it in a form that you can use. Um, so for example, if we took this stack df and we got element number uh, 113, this would give us the Chicago Cubs from 2016. Um, and if we wanted the team, we could do this double indexing. We can get the same information from the data frame, but the way that it's handled is, is a little different. Um, and if we want to convert this back to a, a data frame, we can, and now we have a <coughs> hierarchical indexed uh, data frame. Um, 
unstack also generates a a pandas series, but it it changes the order in which the um, columns are. Uh, it uses the um, column names as the first index and the index names as the second index. So if you wanted that same information we got above, you would go with you would index the team first and then the the number. And again, you can convert that to a data frame which has a, a hierarchical index to get uh, um, to get a different version of that data. So let's do an example to see how this works. So uh, we're going to need one more data file. So let's go back to our GitHub uh, tab. We're going to click back to data and we want survey scores uh, fall 2018. So this is all the data that you guys um, supplied at the beginning of the quarter. Um, what I've done is I've randomized uh, or I've generated a, a random number for each person so um, you, you know your, your personal information has been scrubbed but we can still get the information about um, your answers. So we're going to copy that link, go back to our terminal and we're in the data folder. We're going to do curl dash capital O uh, that, that link and we can take a quick look at that that file uh, whoops, I screwed up. I didn't click on the raw. You see what happened? So I got this like XML file, which is not not what I wanted. So we want to make sure we have the raw link. There we go. So if you did what I did, go ahead and undo it um, or redo it with the, the the proper version, and it should just overwrite the file. Okay, so now we can see we have this CSV file. It's perfect for loading into pandas, so we're going to do that. Go back to lesson 12, and we're going to read CSV. So, um, this is the file. It's, it's kind of in a weird format, though. I did this on purpose, but we have the all the students are the columns and the the um, the data are, are are in are the rows and, and in a typical spreadsheet it would be transposed so we can use this transpose function so we can say df equals df dot transpose and it's gonna it's gonna transpose the data so now we have a more normal looking data frame however because we started out in a uh, well, it's both because we started out in a in this format, and also because these are all strings. But all these columns are still uh, strings or object types. So uh, we want to do um, we want to do something here where we're going to um, convert some columns uh, to uh, numeric, and we're going to do this by creating a dictionary because these we have um, you know from um, from the Google form we have we have all these words some moderate none we want to convert those to numbers um, which is how you how you know you might have entered them if you'd use like say for example the that um, Python script that we used if you if you'd entered them that way they, you would have entered a number but it, it would have generated a word and so we want to get back to this number so we're going to make a dictionary where none maps to zero, some maps to one, moderate maps to two, and experienced maps to three. And then we're going to return the dictionary value of the word. So you're going to this is going to convert score to numeric. So you're going to if it gets the word none, it's going to return this dictionary uh, none, which will be zero. So that's how that function works. And then we're going to specify which columns we want to convert. So we're going to say we want all these score columns, these five score columns, um, we want to convert to, to numeric. 
So we're going to create that, that list of columns, and then we're going to say for call in this list of columns. So we're going to do a for loop that this data frame and that column will be converted to uh, that data frame, um, and then we're going to use this apply method. So this is going to apply to every element in that column this function score to numeric. So there's a, a Bitcoin on here, but it's very, very easy to write. And, and now you can see that we converted uh, all those columns to numeric. And we did that. We did that one by one for those five columns. So it's a very, a very powerful thing. Um, and if we just wanted to like pull out the numeric data to do some plotting, for example, we could use the uh, the iloc style indexing. So we we would do iloc all rows and then column two to the end. So this would be uh, this column here. And also, uh, now we want to check the data type. So we've converted now those five columns to integers. Um, if we wanted to say um, plot just some of the data, we can use the stack and unstack functions. Um, if we wanted to plot all of those, so for example, let's do this. If we wanted to plot just those numeric column, so I would, let's do this instead. So I'm changing the df to df.iloc, so we're just getting now those numeric columns. Um, and so this is this is handy because let's say we wanted to just plot all the scores of all the things together. This would be a quick way to do that. We now have them all in one column, and we can we could you know combine all those data in it as a single column. Let me see how we're doing on on time. Okay, I will.